In this video, we are going to discuss a problem solving question from speed, distance and time. This question is considered to be a harder question and uh, picked up from uh, Veritas Prep. So let's discuss the question. So this is the question that I was talking about. Hope you can see the question, right? So let's work the question. Normally when you're working such questions, from speed, distance and time, I always recommend to people taking the information in a diagrammatic form, reading the question sentence by sentence, instead of reading the entire question in a single go. So let's read out the first sentence. Train A leaves New York at 9 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, headed for Los Angeles at a constant rate of 40 miles per hour. Okay, so you see what you understand from this piece of information is that uh, there is a train A, train A moving from New York to Los Angeles and uh, started at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. That's what is given. Started at 9 a.m. and moving at 40 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. Don't miss out taking down any information, okay? So after you complete this first piece of information, let's move on to the next. Next sentence says, on the same 3,000 mile stretch of track, the train B leaves Los Angeles at noon Eastern time on Monday, traveling to New York at its constant rate of 60 miles per hour. So let's look at it. From this, we understand that the stretch run New York to Los Angeles is like 3,000 miles, 3,000 miles, right? That's what is given here on the same stretch. And further goes on saying that the train B leaves Los Angeles at noon Eastern time on Monday. This is where generally people get confused. Noon Eastern time is nothing but 12 p.m. There is train B heading from North Los Angeles to New York, right? Which started at 12 p.m. and is going at 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour. That's what is given. So after, now that we have taken note of the information given in the second sentence, let's move on further. We see that there is an exception given. What is that exception? Let's take a note of it. Train B is delayed by exactly two hours in Las Vegas. So let's say it reached out this point up to this point. Okay, let's say. And let's say, let's name this point as Las Vegas. And it got delayed by two hours, right? So we took down the information. And also given that approximately it's covered 200 miles. So let's take a note of it, which means this point over here in Los Angeles is 200 miles, okay? Now, moving on to the next piece of information, it says, assuming the time it takes for train B to decelerate and reaccelerate when stopping and resuming in Las Vegas is negligible, at what time will the two trains meet? Okay. Now, you see, you must have taken a note of certain things that the trains are in opposite directions, right? And starting at two different point of times, right? And third thing, you must have taken a note that the train B, train B delayed, delayed by two hours at Las Vegas, right? So these are certain things we need, which we need to really consider while working the question, okay? Okay, whenever you know, I mean, whenever you see such questions, 
you always try to bring them to a common point of time and work, right? Over here, you see the train A beginning at 9 a.m. and train B starting at 12 p.m. So we try to bring it to a common point. So, and also we know very well that uh, before the train B starts, it was train A all alone running for three hours, covering the stretch of 3,000 miles, right? So let's first consider that point. Okay, so from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., which means altogether three hours, it was running alone, going at 40 miles per hour, which means covering a stretch of 120 miles. So, which means train A reached out 120 miles to this point by 12 p.m before the train B starts, right? This is what the conclusion that we are at. It. So it reached out to this point until 12 p.m. covering a distance of 120 miles by the time the train B starts from Los Angeles, right? Now, you also see that the train B, before getting stuck at Las Vegas, it covered a distance of 200 miles. So you see, both the trains now at this point are in opposite directions, 12 p.m., right? 12 p.m., they are in opposite directions. Even this train B is in opposite direction, which means when the train B was covering this 200 miles, 200 miles, you also see the train A is also traveling in opposite direction heading towards Los Angeles, right? So therefore, this 200 miles train B was trying to cover at 60 miles per hour, which means it takes altogether three one by three hours. So this is about train B. So in this meantime, three one by three hours, train A was also trying to cover the distance from the other side at a speed of 40 miles per hour, which means altogether it covers almost like one twenty ten by three into 40, which is 400 by 3, 133, 1 by 3, right? Let me take a pause. In miles. In that 3, 1 by 3 hours. So, which means from 12 noon, in the span of 3 hours, 20 minutes, which means all together, all together, by the time it's 3 hour, 3 p.m., 3.20 p.m., it's covered another 133 miles, right? So, so over here, by the time the train B reached out here, even this is at 3.20 p.m. Agree? Now, So now, uh, the third point that we need to consider is the train B got delayed by about two hours. In that two hours, train A was traveling all alone, which means two hours into 40 miles per hour, which means altogether it covered 80 miles. So additionally, it also covered it also covered additionally another 80 miles, right? So by the time it reached this point, you see it is 5.20 p.m., 5.20 p.m. So let me mark it with red. So this point, by the time it reached this point, it's 5.20 p.m. Now, the train B, after got delayed by two hours, when, I mean, it starts at, 5.20 p.m., right, in opposite direction. 
these are in opposite direction. So we need to now calculate what is the distance left in between them. Already altogether it covered 120 miles a year, 133 miles and 80 miles put together will add up to 333 miles. Plus 200 over here will add up to 534 miles. So out of 3000 miles, if 534 is gone, it's almost like 2,466 miles, right? Which is yet to be covered and yet to be covered by both the trains put together. So both the trains put together are running at 40 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour, 40 plus 60 in opposite direction. So you add up their speeds, which gives you 100, which means it takes 24 hours, 24 plus hours, right? 24, we can say two by three, two by three hours. So from 520, if you add up 24, two by three hours, which will add up to next day, Tuesday, uh, 520 plus two by three hours is something around 40 minutes, which means uh, at 6 p.m. is when they both meet each other. So this is another alternate way of solving the question, right? So hope this helped you understand the question. Thanks for watching the video.